Hello. Very long ago, one year or so, I've said that we will need to change the maps in some regions. I've pointed out Alaska in the first place. It seems that I was right. I think that if you are a geologist, you will be interested in watching the process of orogeny in real life. Anyway, this 6.0 magnitude earthquake gives me another opportunity to check the magnetic tentacle theory. So let's check the satellite imagery. If you expected something really spectacular, you will be rather disappointed, as the magnetic tentacle didn't manifest itself 100% physically. However, it can be seen anyway. Especially if we change the images to water vapor map. but I think that the best it will be to check my new toys. Those images show the temperature gradient and flow lines of air current. And I think that there is no better way to track the octopus. Be careful, because if you will look at those fields too long, it can make you high. It is clearly visible that the vorticity, helical motion, grew in strength right above the epicenter. If you want to see some more destructive power of the electromagnetic forces, look at this field line. rather convincing, don't you think? Today, 8th of June 2013, we had a real outburst of geomagnetic disturbances. NOAA raised the KP index to 6, what means that we had a G2 class geomagnetic storm. And when we look at the Canadian magnetometers plot, we won't have any doubts that the geomagnetic activity was really strong. On the second hand, stations in Europe recorded much less instabilities. 
and this is the cause. There were two solar events which affected us, one after another. First was the CME impact and soon after we were hit by a coronal hole stream. However, the BZ magnetic component of the IMF remained positive most of the time, what means that the auroral activity wasn't too strong. And the Ovation Prime monitors from ISWA confirmed this. As you can see, the auroral power was growing only for short times when the BZ was turning south. However, at the strongest burst, auroral power reached 85 gigawatts what is not for now the highest value recorded by me. I'm sure that you would like to see how the impacts of solar particles affected our planet. I'll show you the SWMF magnetosphere monitor together with the response on electric potential of the ionosphere. Notice how strong is the differential and it still doesn't stop the potential from freaking out. Now I would like to speak about another process which is still unexplained by the modern knowledge about the space weather. BY wobble of the magnetosphere. The fact that our magnetosphere is wobbling was discovered a long time ago, but as for today it is said that the wobble is taking place only at the Z dimension. As I proved many times before, it is not true, as the wobble can take place as well along the y-axis. In this case, the magnetotail will be tilted from east to west and in the opposite direction. If you look at the shape of the magnetopause, you'll notice without any problems that this process is affecting greatly entire electromagnetic field of Earth. Just look how deformed the magnetopause became during the strongest influence. I said it many times before and I'll say it again. 
those readings can't be explained until we will add a force which is affecting the magnetosphere from the night side. But you will probably ask how this is affecting our planet. But before I will answer, first look at this image. As you can see here, there is only one electromagnetic connection with, which is affecting our planet from the west. While there is no connection at the east side. This means that the forces which are normally affecting us from the east and from the west lost their balance what caused the tilt to one side. If you watched my earlier movies, you should already know that the tube which remained connected to the planet is responsible for the positive toward current flow. But then, what's happened with the negative connection? Is it gone? Not really. It looks that the negative field line snapped to a region of magnetosphere which became more energetic than the planet itself. It connected itself straight to the bow shock. Now the solar particles are being sucked out just after they hit the frontal barrier of the magnetosphere. But what does it mean? First, you need to understand that the magnetopause and the bow shock are our main defenses against the incoming solar wind. The shock barrier doesn't allow the energetic particles to enter the inner magnetosphere from the day side. And now imagine that a big part of the particles which make the magnetopause is gone. This will create a huge bridge on the borders of magnetosphere. And solar particles won't be stopped from hitting our planet. You can see it nicely on this monitor. As you can see, there was a huge impact of particles which entered Earth through such hole. And here you can see how it happened. Notice how strongly the magnetopause was disturbed before the impact. Here we can see another perfect example of such bridge. That's it for today. Class dismissed. Peace.